I feared most of all that my older son would be a perpetrator. It was one of the hardest things to look at my son and think that he was going to turn out to be the thing I didn't want him to be most of all, the thing I tried to save him from. And that's why I always say that, you know, domestic violence is a cycle and it continues from one generation to the next. So we need to be very careful of choices we make or what we allow in our homes, especially when there are children around. Early morning, and the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago go to work, to school, hoping and dreaming all under the same hot Caribbean sun. But citizens have become frustrated. Crime and violence is the norm. We are discontented and disconnected. What is a citizen? A citizen is not separate, but belongs. A citizen knows goodness to one can be kindness to many. We all as citizens can make change happen. We all have something good to give, even if it is just a smile or a thank you. The power to change negativity to positivity is in every citizen. We all have our fights, our stories, our joys. This is the story of one citizen, her fight, truth, and hope. I am Kamika. I am citizen. Domestic violence is a cycle. Kamika McClatchy is a survivor. After 20 years of domestic abuse, she found the strength and courage to end her traumatic marriage. But as a mother to seven children, a difficult journey was still ahead. The years of abuse left deep scars that continued to impact her family. Children who experience abuse are more likely to be abusers. But Kamika is determined to try and stop the cycle. Immediately after our separation, let's say like the first two years, there would be a lot of aggressive behavior in my home between my children. So it would go beyond sibling rivalry. They would get really out of hand. Uh, they would fight. They would have really bad arguments. And I believe that that was a spin-off of things they would have lived in and them trying to adjust to a new life. When, when my father finally left, um, to me, things were more calm, but the whole household was really trying to live a better life, but the scars and the bruises were still there. All we knew and knew what to do was to fight. So from the time somebody disagree with each other, it was immediately fight. That was difficult for me because sometimes I just feel like a failure. I felt like even though I had removed what was causing the problem, it was almost as if the problem was still there. And, you know, many times I would have asked myself, what if my kids do not like this, especially my sons? I would wonder if I had the wear it all to cope with this, to bring them into a completely new life, new attitudes, new behaviors. Sometimes when I was younger, at times I saw my father being ab abusive to my mom, but I think it was once 
I saw him hit her and while as soon as he did it, I ran in at the same time and I got some some blows myself too, trying to protect my mother. She was outside her time and they were fighting in the car and he dragged her out and he just drove off. Yeah. And he left her there and she came inside crying. If my father had stayed up to this age that I am right now, if he had stayed and the abuse had continued, I believe that I would not be sitting here today talking to you. I might have been behind the bars because I was really planning to, to go and do my father something just to stop the abuse of my mother. I feared most of all that my older son would be a perpetrator. Um, and this because I realized over time, as he was going to school, he had no respect for female authority. And all the authority figures in his school were female. So the dean was female, principal, vice principal, they were all female. And nearly every morning, morning I would have to go to school because he is suspended. Well, first of all, my father's, his attitude and his ways and the abuse, it affected me in many ways. School, it affected me towards women in authority, even my female friends in primary school. In primary school, I was a smart kid up until standard two. That is when the rage now started to come out. And at times, he didn't want us to study. All he wanted us to do is clean and just listen to whatever he said to do. And that really affected my schoolwork. And my grades just started to drop each year, each year, each year. And it just couldn't go back up until I was in about Form 4. I started to really realize that I can't allow this to destroy my future. And with my female friends in primary school, I, I will always be fighting with them, physically. It was one of the hardest things to look at my son and think that he was going to turn out to be the thing I didn't want him to be most of all, the thing I tried to save him from. And that's why I always say that, you know, domestic violence is a cycle and it continues from one generation to the next. So we need to be very careful of choices we make or what we allow in our homes, especially when there are children around. Well. As an older person now, as a teenager into my 20s, there were times that I wanted to lash out at them, but at the females. But every time I really wanted to, I just think of my father and what he used to do. And I really don't want to put myself there. I don't want to be like him. I just don't want to, so I really hold back myself. The most I might do is curse and, and say some words at times, which I believe I don't mean I apologize after, but there was one time that I was really, I was so angry and she was continue pushing, pushing and pushing and, and, and she was hitting me as well and I was asking her to stop, but she was really angry as well too. She didn't really like what I did and I got so angry I hit her right on her shoulder here and as I did it I felt so bad I just really I didn't want to be in her face anymore because I started to watch myself like are you turning into your father here and I really regret that and after that it never happened again at that moment when he did that, it kind of took me back to something that also happened to me, but it, 
I was real hurt. I was crying hysterically. And I didn't even take my cell phone at the time because I saw how he kind of punished himself and how he was reacting with himself. I immediately forgot about me and just went to him. I forgive him and everything. I understood the struggle he was going through and I know it's kind of hard to control. And the position I played in it, I didn't really help. So, yeah. Well, I'm present age now and I believe about three years ago, I started to talk to him and, and tell him that how I feel and what he did and how it made me. And he just used to stay there and listen to me and try his best to apologize and try to comfort me. Although he knew what he had done, he tried to, to comfort me. And t today, when I, when I speak to him, I could see that he's really trying to be a whole different person because he know he has lost his whole family. He has lost many things and by him losing us, I believe that he realized that he was really wrong in what he did. Abusers, many times, they are blueprints in their mind. Many abusers, not all, but many of them, would have grown up in a home where they would have seen abuse, and it becomes a blueprint. So once they're in the right situation with the right triggers, they would go to that blueprint in their mind. They would lash out, they would do what they have seen, what they have learned at home growing up. And you know, for many abusers, it's about power and control. It's always about power and control. How can we look at my mama again? Nah, just would like to, to go up, up in that side. Why? You know, your side hurt, so it's better you come by me. You better stay safe, right? So you don't want to be safe then? Yes, but the traveling and money. It will be the same thing as if I travel up with you. But they, but they you spend the money? I am aware that I am still at risk to be like my dad because at times when life and everything around me just gets so overwhelming, at times I just can't contain myself and I, I will come into my room and I may hit the door, I may punch the wall. Sometimes I may just go in kickboxing and just ask everybody to fight and just, I will just keep fighting for the whole day until I just drain out. So I believe I still at risk and I can do it some more counseling as well. Just watching you over some time, and I'm proud of who you are, who you've become. Thanks. <laughs> you remember when you say you've been in trouble? Yeah, yeah. But... I remember that. I'll be honest with you, for some time, like, back then I was really afraid. I told her that um, I would lose my son, like, when I say that. I thought I'd lose myself a lot too. I was really afraid I thought that one day the police would call me because they would have you arrested or yeah. something really bad would happen. Um, but when I look at you today, I'm very proud of you. From my heart, I am proud of you. Thanks. And I just, I really tried my best. I know you tried your best because I know if you wanted to, just like how many mothers just pick up and leave and go in the States and just didn't come back. And we had the, the opportunity to do it. And you just didn't do it. So I know at times you just feel like you're failing and stuff. And I just get angry sometimes when you're feeling so because you didn't feel at all. Look, everybody's still here. You and leave and go away. So you're seen about us by yourself. We might not have all the, all the flash screen and stuff right now, but everything will come with our time. And, Whoever out on the streets want to laugh and say whatever, I know you're doing your best and I do my best as a young person. You're doing good. 
Well, I mean, I want to hear you say that because I do feel sometimes like I'm feeling on parenting. Um, I mean, I know I have good children, but sometimes it is difficult to be working, to be single, and to take care of seven of you all because each of you have a different personality and each one of you is require different kinds of attention. So it is be hard sometimes, but it's good to hear it coming from you that you know you appreciate it and it well. And I want you to know I will never leave on it. No matter that. what opportunity is, I never I leave on it. your opinion on something, right? I fathers they come in and I wanna go on my father. You know I never spoke to him, right? And that. So I'm gonna call him and I'm going to wish him happy father's day. But um so if if he just hung up the phone in here one time, do do feel no harm. I wouldn't feel no harm. I'm emotional sometimes already. It's just something I want to do so no matter how it turns out, it will be a chapter closed in my book. Go ahead. Just be strong. Eh? Just be strong. I'll try my best. Hi. In the next episode, we meet Kamika's oldest daughter and see how domestic abuse affected her life. Also, Kamika has a chance to see what her father looks like for the very first time. My childhood was a little challenging because growing up in the abuse that we grew up in it kind of affect me up to this day have you ever seen your dad no you're from the back would you like to see him of course okay. uh, know what you see is what you get press this button and